John Ruddock is from the Liberal Democrat Party, running for the Senate for New South Wales. How are you, John? G'day, Ricky. Good, good. Good to speak. Now, John, uh, we know you a bit from the media commentary space as someone who was very uh, much involved in the Liberal Party for some time. We spoke with Susan Lee recently. She still hasn't got her pre-selection sorted out. Can you give us some background why someone so close to an election, a sitting minister, wouldn't know if they're going to be pre-selected or not? Okay, so what happened was about 12 years ago, a little movement started in the New South Wales Liberal Party, which says that uh, we don't want factional hotshots choosing who our candidates are. We want the local branch members who live in that electorate to to all of them to have a vote on who the candidate should be. Now, the party hotshots, the factional bosses did not like this one little bit. Uh, But then the party rules changed in 2017. They said, yes, we're going to have democratic pre-selections to choose our candidates because it gets rid of corruption and it gets rid of dud members. Now, then what happened was that when those rules were changed in 2007... The factional bosses on the way out, they said, "Okay, well, these won't be implemented until after the next federal election. Okay, well, that's where we are now. So we're meant to have had democratic pre-selections. Now, we called for, or the party called for, candidates want to to nominate in various seats, in all all the Liberal Party seats, in about June last year. Now, there were uh, various people were challenged, including Susan Lee and Alex Hawke and Trent Zimmerman. Now, what should have happened in the middle of last year when there was going to be a, a challenge, which we know it's a democratic party, they were meant to be, there should be, when there might, one of these challenges might be the next Robert Menzies. So these people should be able to stand up and say, well, look, I think I should be the Liberal candidate. Now, what has happened is certain people who know that they're not going to get their way if there is a democratic pre-selection, or at least they may not get their way, they have just stalled and stalled and stalled Scott Morrison is up to his eyeballs in this stalling process. They're trying to stop democracy. The Scott Morrison centre-right faction and his little mate Alex Hawke, they did. They fought against democracy for 10 years in the Liberal Party, intensely, uh, in a very, very uh, uh, unimpressive manner. And so now, uh, ScoMo's mate Alex Hawke is, is, wants to be challenged. The people up there, I think, do want to select another candidate. And they're trying through all these little mechanisms, they're trying to slow it down so we run out of time so that the party just has to appoint who the sitting members are. It's absolutely outrageous. Well, and I guess, Gather, for you, you mentioned democratic principles. It got to the point you were fed up with it as a a long-standing Liberal and you've joined the Liberal Democrats. Well, I have joined the Liberal Democrats because the Liberal Democrats are basically what the Liberal Party used to stand for in the 1980s, which is uh, small government, low taxes, pro-business, deregulation and not clocking up $1 trillion in debt, thank you very much, Scott and Josh. So the Liberal Democrats are saying, look, we want to, we, we've, got, yeah, we've got a major crisis here. It's not called COVID. It's called a massive overreaction to COVID. And now we've got, now we've, we've really damaged our economy. There was a survey, Ricky, last night in England asking British people, our biggest source of uh, tourists forever, they're saying, rank the countries you most want to visit as a tourist. And Australia came dead last, okay? Because they've heard about all the stupid lockdowns that we've carried on with for so long, much more than most of the world, pretty much all the world. And so, you know, we've, that's another big industry we've, we've knocked around. So, uh, yeah, so I joined the Liberal Democrats. We're a small party, uh, but we are hopefully going to become a bigger party at the next election, Ricky. And you mentioned the United Kingdom uh, and restrictions for lockdowns in Australia. Boris Johnson's government is very quickly getting rid of those restrictions. What's the Liberal Democrat Party's uh, policies regarding existing levels of restrictions at a federal and state level? The Liberal Democrats support ending 100% of COVID mania, you know, months ago. We don't believe in mask mandates. We don't believe in compulsory vaccines. Uh, we don't, but we don't believe in, in vaccine mandates. Uh, we believe that vaccines should be a private decision, and it should, you know, and, and it should be a voluntary decision. So we're not out there like some parties are saying, "Don't take the vaccine." That's not us. And we're certainly not like Labor, Liberal, and Green saying, "You must take the vaccine, or you lose your job and you lose your life." Almost. Uh, we're saying we're the pro-choice party when it comes to vaccines. Uh, so that's our view on that. Now the rest, you're right, all around the world, Ricky. They're sort of dismantling uh, the COVID nonsense. Well, that's a good thing, and it's happening in Australia. And why are they doing this? Because the politics have changed. The average Joe Blow out there in the world 
to say, I'm sick of this crap because I think the people have, I think that government leaders and other leaders have hyped this thing, hyped this COVID very, very dangerously. Uh, just a reminder, uh, me t- talking about the Liberal Democrats uh, as opposed to the Liberals, there was a court action, I think, the Liberal Party was running against the Liberal Democrats about the use of the name. Is that all cleared up or are they still trying to make life difficult for the Liberal Democrats? Uh, no, I'm glad you're on top of your detail. Um, what happened was we were in the High Court last Tuesday. I'm the plaintiff and I think it went quite well. So we're, we're now waiting for the seven justices of the Austra- High Court of Australia to make a decision now. This, if they happen to force us to change our name, we'll probably become something like the Liberty Democrats or something. Now, if uh, but this is not so much, so, and we'll be fine. Won't bother us at all. Uh, but this is this is a, a much bigger stake, and that what this legislation does is it forbids any little party using a word that's in the name of a major party. So it means that it's going to give the, the big parties have given themselves it's a monopoly on certain words. So you think about it, you can have a party called the Farmers Party, but you can't have a party called Farmers for Climate or Liberty Farmers. You can just have one word. Now, we are meant to live in a pluralistic democracy. Labor and Liberal ganged up to get this legislation through. The entire crossbench voted against it. The Greens, to their credit, voted against it. Jackie Lambie voted against it. One Nation voted against it. Rex Patrick voted against it. So they all voted against They knew what was going on here. This was a major wrought by the major parties, ScoMo and our vote together. And we've gone to the High Court and we said, look, we do not think that this is a constitutional law because it prohibits the Australians' right to to, uh, free political expression. So we'll find out. We'll find out what happens in the next... next, uh, next could be any day, Ricky. We'll find out soon. Sure. And uh, just lastly, you'd be looking in the Senate, I imagine, whilst you're looking to grow the party, that uh, one of your first sort of footholds in federal politics again, you did have David Lionhelm, New South Wales Senator, previously for the Liberal Democrats, is to get that balance of power in the Senate and, and change, I guess, mask mandates and like that as much as you can from the federal Senate level. Look, I believe what's going to happen at this coming federal election is we're going to have six to ten what we'll call freedom senators in the... Senate, and that will be, you know, that might be some United Australia Party people, some Pauline Hanson people, and hopefully it'll be a lot of Liberal Democrats. Now, I believe that that block there will be able to say, uh, yeah, we're not going to, uh, you know, we want an end to COVID mania ASAP. Forget all this nonsense. Let unvaccinated Australians leave the country. Let unvaccinated tourists come to the country. Let's just Get it behind us, because it's all been it's all been very, very destructive. Well, John, we'll keep an eye on your progress whenever we do end up having a federal election. Thanks very much for your time and input today. Really appreciate it. Good on you, Ricky. Thanks very much for the, for the opportunity.